Hello, I'm Bob Posen. Currently, I'm senior lecturer at Harvard Business School, and formerly, I ran two large global financial institutions. I've also served as a senior official in federal and state agencies. And most importantly for this video, I am author of the book entitled Extreme Productivity, Boost Your Results, Reduce Your Hours. Today I'm going to talk to you about one of the chapters of the book, Running Effective Meetings. Specifically, we're going to discuss four topics. First, what's a legitimate purpose for a meeting? Second, how do we do advanced planning for a meeting? Third, what are the typical problems of a bad meeting? And fourth, what are the key features of a good meeting? With all these complaints, why do we have meetings in the first place? To exchange information just because it's Tuesday? No, these are bad reasons. Meetings are an inefficient way just to exchange information. Emails and memos are much more efficient. In my view, there are four valid purposes for a meeting. Number one, discuss and debate something. Number two, engage in brainstorming. Number three, do complex negotiations. And number four, building camaraderie. Let me touch on each of these four purposes. Number one, discuss and debate something. To share opinions on a controversial decision, for example, should we change the long-standing hospital policy on visitation hours? That's worthy of a meeting and some good discussion. Number two, brainstorming. To build energy and play off the group's ideas. For example, let's come up with some new ideas on how to reduce patient falls on 6 West. The third purpose is to engage in complex negotiations. To work out the details of an agreement or partnership between two parties. For example, let's work out the details of an agreement with our new vendor on electronic health records. A final purpose for a meeting is building camaraderie. To improve morale and collaboration at work. For example, let's meet to welcome the new residents on our floor. So remember, you shouldn't call a meeting unless there's a legitimate reason. And make sure to tell your prospective audience what that reason is, so everyone will know why they're coming to the meeting. In my experience, there are four main rules to follow when planning a meeting. Rule number one, only invite the people you really need at the meeting. More than six to eight attendees, that's not so good unless you're trying to build camaraderie. Don't be afraid to exclude people who have only a tangential relationship to what's going to go on in the meeting. Rule number two for planning a meeting. Find the smallest room that will reasonably fit the group. This way people won't be spread out and you'll encourage more interaction among the audience. Rule number three. Find a location that is not in a high traffic area. Get a room that limits distractions and encourages concentration. You don't want people coming in and out of the meeting. And most importantly, rule number four, keep those meetings short. Meetings should never be scheduled for more than 90 minutes and preferably 60 minutes. According to many studies, between about 60 minutes and 90 minutes, people lose attention and the quality of the meeting quickly deteriorates. We've all been to too many bad meetings. They go on forever and they don't seem to really accomplish anything. Let's take a look at an example of a bad meeting. Hey, Gina, do you know what this meeting is about? It just says improvement meeting. No idea, per usual. <sighs> sorry, I'm so sorry. Uh, my last meeting went over and I haven't really had a chance to prepare. Um, let me just check one of these. Um, I know I'm late. Sorry, guys. Wait, do I need all these papers or just these two? Uh, I think we need this one and this. This one. Uh, yeah. All right. So 
so uh, in the next 90 minutes or so, we're going to cover the results from our first PDSA cycle, our patient satisfaction scores, our employee satisfaction scores. Um, let me, I'll write it up on the board for us. Does get hand out. Two things, right? Mm -hmm. um, yes. All right. Now we can get started. Did you get both? I didn't get any. Oh, Did you guys get these? Okay. I think yeah. I think that's good. All right. So let's start. So as you can see from the document here, um, we're we're having some serious issues with our data collection. So we seem to be doing well early in the week, and I don't know if it's people are more energized after the weekend. Uh, we're not really sure what's going on with the numbers. I don't know, maybe they're put, being put in wrong, or people just aren't reporting. I don't know I don't know what we're supposed to do about this. Do you guys have any ideas? Are you seeing anything on the floor? No? Well, I mean, we know what happened last year at this time, and. Okay, does anyone have any ideas why we might be lagging off at the end of the week? Well, we stay late doing paperwork every night that I'm really not sure is necessary. We've been complaining about it for weeks now. I knew I should have worked out this morning. I'm not going to have time to go to the gym if this meeting goes any longer. <sighs> These meetings are killing me. I can't wait to get back to my desk and start working. Okay, um, oh, shoot, we're out of time already. Okay. So, we're going to have to meet again next week. Um, oh, we have to do Monday. Uh, I'll, I'll email the group and we'll get another time on the books for maybe the end of the week um, to meet again. So, are we supposed to do anything? Are there any next steps? I don't know. Let's just get one. Okay. Here are the five typical flaws in a bad meeting. First, there's no agenda for the meeting, so its purpose is unclear. Second, no materials are sent in advance, so you just get a big stack of papers as you walk into the meeting. Third, as a result, the leader has to spend a long time telling you what the meeting's about and what these background materials are about, so there's very little time for discussion. Fourth, as the introduction by the leader drags on and on, people start to get antsy, they lose attention, and pretty soon they're thinking about something else. And finally, number five, there's no good closure for the meeting. The meeting ends without any clarity about what's gonna happen next. Now that we've seen what a bad meeting looks like, let's delineate the key features of a good meeting an efficient and productive meeting. Here's an illustration of what a good meeting looks like. Can you believe we've only had three patient falls this month? It seems like we're really making some great progress. It really is exciting. I wonder though how we can get that number even lower. Mm. Hi. Hi everyone. I trust everyone has had a chance to review the data I sent out in advance. Clearly we've seen some great progress with our new patient identification system, which is really exciting. As you can see on the agenda, we'll get to the data. But first, we wanted to hear from Jessica about Mrs. Smith's fall. Jess? Yeah, thanks, Seth. Uh, so you all know uh, Mrs. Smith. She came in on December 9th. We identified her as high risk. Maybe we can do a site visit to that hospital in Cleveland to see why they've been so successful in reducing patient falls. I wonder if we could test those maps I read about last week. Oh, and we should shout out some patients. I should jot that down and bring it up at the end if there's time. We're short-staffed. So unfortunately, we did have a fall. All right, so we have just a couple of minutes left, so let's review our next steps. The patient ID system was effective, but I think we need to test some additional changes. 
Rachel, could you coordinate a site visit with university hospitals so that we can learn from their success? Sure. And Gina, would you be willing to shadow some patients so we can see what their experience is like? No problem. Thank you. So what are the key features of a good meeting? First, the agenda and materials are sent out in advance, preferably 24 hours before the meeting. Second, the leader of the meeting gives a short introduction to tee up the key issues and the key decisions to be made. Third, because the leader can assume that everyone has read the materials in advance, most of the time at the meeting can be spent in discussion and debate. Fourth, there's good closure and agreement expressly about next steps. Who will do what and by what time target? And fifth, the meeting takes no longer than 90 minutes and preferably 60 minutes. Keep those meetings short. While these principles for good meetings seem straightforward, they are violated all the time. But you can take the lead in your organization in improving meetings by following the simple rules that we've delineated in this video.